Hey guys, today we're going to fly during a winter advisory out of Eagle County, Colorado. And we're going to go to Telluride using my winter um, ortho scenery for X-Plane 11. Um, the only scenery that doesn't have it is Eagle, but all the outskirts of Eagle has it, so it's still good enough, I guess. All right, so let's go to observations. And as you can tell, Eagle is smack dab in the middle of this advisory. There's a lot of turbulence below flight level 180. But it's going to be a little sporty on takeoff. But once we get to altitude, we should be fine. And Telluride, I think we'll be doing a circle to land, maybe, if we can get in there. We'll see how that goes. If we can't get into Telluride, we can go to Durango. Right here. And we're going to file the Beaver 1 sprocket transition, junction, and then cones VOR. And 180, mainly because of that altitude. What's the altimeter here? Oh, 180 is not available because we're under standard. So let's go 18, 19, let's do. Uh, 20,000 today since the pressure is what it is. And we'll bring um, 15 of that. All right, we need 511 there. Add that fuel. Here at the terminal, we'll taxi to two five. Beaver one, take off heading two zero six till we reach seven thousand one hundred. Then we go direct copper, climb via the SID, so we gotta be above thirteen one at APRES. Also we have to for runway two five we got to do a climb of 740 feet per nautical mile to 10,200, which is about 2,000 feet per minute for our speed. And then um, got to meet these altitude restrictions there. Twenty-nine seven six, And that's information golf current at Eagle. So we're going to be doing about 180 knots, should maintain around 2,000 feet per minute to make that to 10.2. So all that is good. Follow the IFR, flight level 200, since 180 is not available, we're going west, so it's got to be even, and it's IFR, so even without the 500, you would add 500 if it's VFR, but we're doing IFR today because of winter advisory, so we're in DHAD slant 
at uh, Lima today, Eagle, Telluride 2000, Durango is her backup, and IFR, file, flight plans on file, all good to go. Okay. Eagle is there. It looks like the top is 180. So we should be out of the clouds for the majority, or above the clouds, I should say, above this turbulent air. We'll climb out of it. And oh, I wanted to show you this too. So, you know, Pilot Edge. Again, has all this aircraft that they'll give you advisories for. And the thing with Pilot Edge is when you sign in to Pilot Edge, since everything is as real as it can get, you use all the frequencies listed on the real world charts. So when we call up our clearance, we're going to actually use this frequency, the uh, clearance delivery frequency at uh, Eagle 12475. Then we're going to have to switch to ground, and then we're going to have to switch to tower. And then we're going to have to switch to Denver departure, I believe, which will get that frequency at our clearance. Uh, compared to VATSIM, where, yeah, it's free to fly on VATSIM, but there's no ATC at Eagle. So the only frequency you would use for your clearance, ground, tower, departure, and center is all the exact same frequency. So you're not actually changing any dials. You're not changing frequencies. It kind of ruins the immersion for me, but that's just me. So I'd rather pay to actually change these frequencies and use real world frequencies and phraseology on the Pilot Edge network. You get what you pay for. Um, so I'm not knocking Pilot Edge. I mean, uh, Vatsim, I think there's a place for it, especially on events or the East Coast on, uh, you know, weekends and such. But like you could get Denver approach, but again, at Denver, they don't have any clearance. There's no ground control, there's no tower. So you're stuck with two frequencies in this case. If I were to leave Denver, you would have to talk to approach for everything approach and under, and then you could switch to center as you depart. So yeah, just find pot edge more realistic in regards to frequency changes and so on like that. All right, a little food for salt, thought there. Let's head on over to the aircraft, shall we? All right, here we are, good old Eagle. The airport doesn't have snow on it, but the outside, the outskirts does, so it's good enough for me. All the screens coming to life over here, and let's do 68, that's fine, and let's see if I can sixty-eight and let's 
doing about 45 on that and fuel looking at block fuel 5119 so we'll just say 52 even there and that is way too much cargo so let's It gets us up to 21, so that will work. That'll work fine today. The cargo, we got our fuel. CG is pretty much in the center. Spoilers to taxi. Anti skid on. Got DC power connected. Just doing our inspections and all that. Gotta go come back here and get our mascot while people are boarding. our mascot Elevation 6542. We'll need that to check uh, altimeter. And we're at spot six, I believe, so we should be around that number there. 3938 for 106, 54, 8. So that's close enough for us. APU cranking so we can get some environment going. Heat in particular. So the uh, frequency again one twenty four seven five. Ground is point eight. Using a um, 
radio panel, so it didn't show up in the standby, but that's okay. Right, we know the altimeter is 29.76. ATIS is 135.57. Uh, the other thing is, uh, if we were to fly this on VATSAM, we wouldn't have any ATIS. At least here we have ATIS. Arriving and departing runway 25. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial again, contact you have information golf. Eagle County Regional Airport, ATIS Information Golf. 1856 Zulu. Wind 230 at 16, gust 23. Visibility 10. View clouds at 4400. Ceiling 5,500 overcast. Temperature minus 8. Dew point minus 14. Altimeter 2976. Arriving and departing runway 25. LDA runway 25 approach in use. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information golf. Eight. Make sure we are showing up on the map here. And we can also cheat, see if our uh, flight plan has changed, which doesn't appear to have. It's not always a guarantee it will stay the same, but as of right now, it is, it is what it is. All right. While I'm here, let's see if there is a flight from Eagle to Telluride. Now that's weird. I'm going to have to say something to them about that. They should have Telluride in here, you would think. So I guess I won't be doing the uh, A cars today. That's fine, though. phone was just ringing and it was the wrong number that doesn't even happen anymore these days I get wrong texts <laughs> more than wrong calls sounds like we're all boarded up let's get our clearance do one quick last check here make sure ATIS hasn't changed it's still golf Afternoon, Eagle Clearance, United 1399 at the terminal with Golf IFR. Tell you right. United 1399, Eagle Clearance. Clear to tell you right, Airport. Beaver 1 departure. Marked. Transition, then it's filed. Columbia SID. Roger, Denver Center, 120.47. Golf 2611. Clear to tell you right via Beaver 1 departure. Spark transition, then it's filed. Columbia the SID. Departure with Denver Center, 120.47, squawk 2611, United 1399. United 1399, read back, correct? So since it's climbed via the SID, top altitude is 15,000. So you just go off whatever the SID says on that. All right, let's stand by ground. And towers 19.8. All right, we got that ready. Let's punch in a flight plan. Let's 
Looks like my Eric is good till January 24, so we're good on that. So we'll do flight plan, menu, depart, number two for two five, beaver one, so two, and sparked transition, enter that in the flight plan. And then from there, we're going to do JNC. And then cones. And then Tigerad. Let's do this. Let's do. I'll do the approach later. So let's do. So I know if we do the approach, cones is 13,000. So let's set 13,000 there. Okay, and then. Flight plan wind, average wind is 299 at 67. Let's see if the winds change. Grand Junction, I don't change all that much, so we'll just leave it like that. That's fine, it's mainly for fuel. Um, and that's the average of all the winds anyway. So now we're going to go fuel, zero fuel weight is 5.2, enter. I'm sure that was zero fuel weight. And then fuel is 5.91. So 58.088. Eight. So that matches that so come over here grab all the info There is an app on iPad you can get for free. It's DH8D TOLD, T-O-L-D, Takeoff Landing Distance Calculator. It's free. You can find it on the iStore. So, 52897. And then our fuel, 5.86. Calculator, takeoff mass, go to takeoff page, flaps 10, enter the airport information, runway 25, elevation 6548, which by the way, that is right on the money. Load METAR, loads the winds, the runway is not wet, we don't need ice protection on for the takeoff, I don't think. Let's see what that. No, we'll be all right. We can turn it on if we need it later, but not for the takeoff. So show results. So we got 122. Fifty-four, 
15. Altitude select on that. Okay. Everything looking good. Our pilot is set up. Running off an APU there, so disconnect the ground power unit. Ground to cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you're ready. Ground to cockpit, toes driving up. Looking for the auto feather test to pass. Good pass there. Terrain, terrain. Okay. All doors hatched are closed. Ready to connect. Start at 206, and we're going to score up 2611. Press and hold, mode Charlie. All good to go there. Set our so connected, bypass pin through, release the sparking brake. Turn on the beacon light. And we are ready to start her up. Starting pushback, go ahead and start the engines.
Operation complete, set the parking brake. Disconnecting tow, stand by. All right, now we gotta verify these lights go off. Go into uh, 900 mode initially. Uh, you came a tower in November 727. Bravo. So is disconnected, Five bypass pin's been, been removed. Hand signal on the right, she's all yours, Captain. All right, AC lights extinguished. Good. Two good gens. Final runway two seven, November seven seven, Bravo Mike. Turn on the bleeds. Main bus tie off. Light control check. Laps 10 for takeoff. Window heat, pedo. I mean, not pedo yet, but we'll get there. And we need taxi light on. Y'all damper on. All that looks good. Let's get our ATIS again. Zero. Four thousand five hundred scattered. Ceiling five thousand five hundred overcast. Temperature minus seven. Dew point minus one three. Altimeter two nine or seven two. Arriving and departing runway two five. LDA runway two five approach and use. Read back all runway assignment and hold short instruction. Advise on initial contact, you have information, Hotel. Eagle County Regional Airport, AGIS Information Hotel, 1956 Zulu, wind 230 at 19, gust 25, visibility 10, 4500 scattered, ceiling 5500 overcast, temperature minus 7, dew point minus 13. Altimeter 297 2. Arriving and departing runway 25. LDA runway 25 approach and use. Read back all runway assignment and hold short instruction. Advise on initial contact you have information hotel. Alright, let me double check my performance here. It looks like we are now at hotel. So 240 at. Let me go back to takeoff data. Low to METAR. Show results 122.34. All right. So when I loaded the METAR for the performance, it was under the new um, weather. Let's just make sure everything looks like it's supposed to per the METAR. And we are on ground control, according to the real world chart. Eagle ground, United 1399 at the terminal, current with hotel ready taxi. United 1399, Eagle ground, runway 25, taxi Alpha. 
Runway 25 via Alpha, United 13, I think. Yakima Tower, November 77, Bravo Mike, 3 mile final, runway 27. November 7, Bravo Mike, Yakima Tower, wind 2207, runway 27, clear to land. Uh, clear to land, runway 27, November 77, Bravo Mike. Wintery advisory flight is on the way. All these passengers are entrusting this. This guy, Tom Moore, 47 years old. He's like, you can do it. All right, guys, if you like this video, if you like all the uh, stuff I've covered as far as pod edge differences between that and VATSIM and frequency changes and all that, please give it a thumbs up. It shows that you guys are watching it and you enjoy this type of content. And gives me the energy to, to talk these out, to make these videos. If you guys ain't learning nothing, then I'm not doing what, I'm, what I set out to do. Switch to Tower 19.8 and 120.47. This Denver departure. Pedo heat, and we're going to do. Bleeds off to max on that. Takeoff config test is good. Eagle Tower, United 1399, one short, runway 25. Runway 25, clear for takeoff, United 1399. Alright, lighting lights, strobes. Clear right. Right turn when you're able, then taxi to the ramp via Alpha on the street. Right turn when able, taxi to the ramp on this frequency, November 77, Bravo Mike. Positive right. Gear coming up. Laps up. We gotta hold at least 2,000 feet per minute. 
until we get to uh, ten two. Packs on minimum now. Should have the terrain on, but I know we're good. Unit 1399 and contact the Denver Center. Over to Denver Center, United 1399 to you. There you go, Denver Center. Denver Center, United 1399, coming via the Beaver 1 departure, leaving 9,900. United 1399, Denver Center, right out of Alright, there's 10-2, so we're going to do Auto Feather off. Bring back our props, 900. Put that system in regular mode. One thing I didn't do was I should have turned on these uh, fuel pumps for takeoff. So that was my bad. It's just an extra safety feature. It didn't it wasn't actually going to make a difference. It just helps in case a uh, engine fuel fuel pump board to go bad or some something like that so it's good to have them on you're supposed to oh, I messed up and it cuts down on the noise Starting to pick up a little bit of icing, so actually we're losing the icing now, so we don't need the, any ice. I'm monitoring it here, so we're good. I stopped at 15,000 because that's top of the SID. Yeah, I maintain level 200. I maintain level 200, United 1399.
to land on the night to taxi lights now. Also open up those intakes which will automatically turn on the heat. Eventually. Remember, we couldn't file 180 because the altimeter pressure is less than standard of 2992. So you actually lose a flight level per every inch of uh, pressure. So we had no choice but to file either uh, 16000 or flight level 200. Those were our only two options for this flight as far as MEA and all that stuff. We got standard on the altimeter, flight level 180's transition altitude in uh, the United States. Heaters are on now. Thousand to go. And as soon as we get to Sparked, we'll request a shortcut to Cones VOR and skip the junction. So even though we're going to typically most of the time be able to skip junction VOR, when you follow the IFR flight plan, they're going to make it, you know, as safe as possible. So they might make you fly something that's a little bit longer than what you would like but then as soon as you get to altitude you can request shortcuts so even if you know if you don't get as you filed which is why you never say request IFR to tell you right as filed because you don't always get as filed then you can always request a shortcut once you're in the air so it's really not that big of a deal Flaps are up, all that is good. We should be busting out of these clouds at some point in the near future.
All right, let's ask for our shortcut. Denver Center, United 1399. When able, request shortcut. Come to VOR. Uh, Roger that, you know, 13 and 9, thanks. So that's why I said when able, request shortcut. So. Probably have to be uh, a certain distance away from uh, these mountains that are between um, Junction and Sparkett. Actually, let's come back here. Show you the cool things that this plane does have. You can sit down. You can pull out trays. The not so fun part is putting them back up. literally do this all day so close and even the toilet flushes the lavatory same thing, pain. Cracks me up. Take the time to have a flushing sound. Control the side lights at night, you would see it for sure light up. I'm going to warm things up in the cabin. It's a little chilly, 68 Fahrenheit. All right, put this recording on pause till we get closer. See you in a bit. Just broke out of all that winter storm clouds, making a left turn. We got our uh, permission to go direct cones. What it looks like when all the ortho is colored with snow. I've got a, uh, a program that I use to make all the pork boy ortho snowy. It's called, you can probably search for it in the X-Plane forums. Uh, I think it's just called snowy ortho or something like that. Let me see what it says. Let's see, maybe I have a note about it. Winterizer, a tool for snowy ortho photos. However, 
probably not worth it now. It's kind of, I only use it for Colorado and Utah, I think. Um, otherwise, I just use the uh, SAM, uh, SAM program and you can come here and you can reload all the scenery. into winter but you have to have that library installed which I, I didn't install it for this flight because it's for me I've already done the winterization of this ortho so it's actually faster for me to just edit that file it takes two seconds compared to a reload of the entire scenery which takes like another five minutes so, but you don't have to have the winterizer, but you can search winterizer, a tool for snowy ortho photos. But again, if you have the latest SAM with the winterizing, you can just uh, turn off or what's it called? Disable the ortho photos and then use SAM winterizer. And then it looks pretty much the same as this. A little bit different but similar enough. So kind of user preference. Either one's free, either one is, works. All right, I'm gonna pause it again till we get closer. Actually, let me get our uh, top of descent here. Uh, we're gonna do, dang, so we got 40 miles to top of descent. So I'll see you in about 40 miles. Denver Center, 11857. Denver Center, United 1399, level 200. We'll be descending in a minute for 16,000. Current with weather at Telluride. Request the Arnav Zulu, runway 9 approach, starting at uh, Eknoff. United 1399. Denver Center, altimeter 29081, and uh, proceed direct ECNOF and expect that. 29081, clear direct ECNOF, and I can expect that. United 1399. Everyone, QC, Chair, Quebec, Centennial, Clarence, clear to the Walden Airport, Rockies 5 departure. Kremlin transition. Then direct. Maintain 8,000. And expect 16,000 within 1 zero minutes. Denver departure 126.1, clock 3706. Come back, uh, rebound, Gates, correct? Okay, 1399, cross Acknoff, at or above 15,000, you don't have to do only minor pitch. Cross Eknov, at or above 15,000, cleared Arnav Zulu, runway 9 approach, and I-13 there. Eknov is definitely above 15,000. So we'll reset our altitude for 15,000 and make sure we clear Eknop, which we will. So let's just go to minimums actually. So the minimums for this, jump brief, be uh, 
ten six so we'll say ten seven. So we gotta have the field by ten seven. So it was eight one. We'll get ADIS here. It's AWAS actually. Eighteen thirty two. Alright, we are good for a straight in we can see it, if we don't see it, Unicom is one, two, three, or your advisor, yeah, uh, CTAP, one, two, three, zero. Okay, 1399, no traffic is there between you and the field at this point. Your radar services are terminated to report cancellation of IFR or missed approach while airborne on this frequency. You can also cancel on the ground within five minutes of landing on one, two, two, point two. Frequency change approved. I'm sure I'll talk to you shortly. Frequency change approved. You know, I thirteen thing. All right, so we're not going to cancel IFR until we're actually on the ground and make sure we can get in here. And if we need to, let me see, be uh, about a 180 turn. That's good enough. We're making a right turn out of here if we have to. Traffic, traffic, fly, fly. Telluride traffic, United Dash 8 on the Arnav 9 approach straight in for runway 9er. Descend, descend now. Telluride traffic. Descend, descend now. Increase, descent, increase, descent. It's okay, it's just a drone, so I'm not worried about it. It's actually about 800 feet above us. Won't even see it. Clear of conflict. Let's do some ice protection here. Turn on our lights. Make sure the weather looks correct. 
Yep, we have the field. I always do that just to make sure we're good. And that's just the pressure. Yep, happens every time. Alright, believe it or not, I do have the lights, so we're going to continue. Probably wouldn't do this in real life. 25, 25, 25, 25, 100. I did see the field, so I'm technically on in the clear. Telluride traffic, United Dash 8, short final runway 9, full stop, Telluride traffic. It's a little bit breezy down here now. Wind shear and stuff like that. There is a little bit of an incline here. Sink rate, sink rate, terrain, sink rate, terrain, sink rate, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Telluride traffic, United Dash 8 exiting the runway, taxiing the parking, Telluride traffic. Alright, so let's go 122.2. And what that's going to do is simulate a phone call to Denver and let them know we're on the ground. about this drone. It's not a real person. There's nothing you can do about it. Good afternoon. Uh, vision chat, November 718, golf Alpha Centennial, request IFR to Eagle. November 718, golf Alpha Centennial, clearance, standby. Standby. Denver Center, United 1399, on the ground, cancel IFR, thanks. United 1399, received, good day. Number 78 Golf Alpha Centennial Clearance, clear to Eagle Airport, Rockies, 5 departure. Kremlin transition, then direct. Maintain 8,000, expect fly level 200 within 10 zero minutes. Denver departure 126.1, squawk 7020. Vision Jet uh, 718 Golf Alpha cleared uh, to Eagle, uh, Rockies 5 departure, to Kremlin transition. Uh, expect 8,000 and uh, 200, 10 minutes of departure. Departure 126.1 and squawking 7020. November 718, Gulf Alpha, read back, Craig. Right? 
technically on our approach there when that drone was coming at us that would not have happened in real life because when you do an IFR approach into an airport it's one in one out so if that airplane which you would have presumed with this weather would have been departing IFR that airplane would have been on hold an IFR hold and would not have been able to depart until after I just cleared my IFR. So I would have had to have landed first, then the sensor would have been able to clear that guy for takeoff. Since the weather it is the way it is, it's one in, one out. So that's how that works. So since I had the authorization to land, that guy in real world would not have been able to take off, but that's just an AI generated aircraft and not a real pilot uh, sitting at a sim. So can't really do much about it and he didn't advise me of the traffic because I had already switched the advisories CTAF and it's just how it is with that all right before we shut down let's see what a replay looks like I floated it on purpose because I knew this was an incline on the landing. Difference is good, so we'll get there. Okay. Do control lock. Transponder. And by labs, all that stuff is off. Y'all damper off. Spoilers. Yep, all good. Anti collision. Turn those off. Turn off the seat belts now. Let's tie, connect that generator. Window heat, bus tie, turn that off, taxi light. Emergency brake. 
Mission levers, signs, no scroll steering, radar, anti skid, off, bleed air. I think I turned all those off. Reset off, put that them in. APU. Research and displays. This plane is freaking awesome. Now, let's see the ski resort. Sometimes you'll see skiers at the ski resort. Probably we'll see some gondolas somewhere. This is where the avalanche happened the other day, actually, isn't it? Tell you right. I did not do this flight remembering that. Um, so hopefully everybody survived that. Here we go. Here's the lifts. It's the lifts, and we actually got people skiing, which is kind of cool. And you got the gondolas. So these guys don't show up in the uh, Summertime, I always use real world weather. So in summertime, these guys don't appear, I don't think. Even if I turn it to snowy. Man, they go really high up there, don't they? be hard to cross a road though. That might not be the most accurate representation, but still pretty darn cool. I'll show you something else that's cool about this scenery. It's the nighttime. People are still skiing. So people all the slopes are lit up. Include the lodge. So yeah. Got the airport over there. And the city of Telluride. Down there. All right, guys, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe. And if you do subscribe, make sure you hit the bell to all. That way you'll be alerted whenever I upload a new video. If you have questions um, or a comment or a suggestion on anything or a request of a certain aircraft uh, flows or whatnot, or how to fly a SID or a STAR, or want me to show a certain approach or something like that, as long as it's in the Pilot Edge network, I'll do my best to accommodate you. And the Pilot Edge network is pretty much uh, Denver West, the entire country from Denver West. So any airport west to include Denver uh, works for me. All right, guys. You guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll catch you next upload. Chase out.